God for Camp Rose. Yeah. 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 Church. Thank God for another Sunday. Yes. Yeah. 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 We thank God over and over again for the divine knowledge that we know who He is. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. In Genesis 101 says, In the beginning God made the heavens and the earth. Yeah. Yeah. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 10, in reference to Jesus. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him. According to Malachi 2 and 10, Have we not all one Father, have not one God created us all? Therefore, if God created the heavens and the earth, according to the Old Testament, Jesus created the heaven and the earth according to the New Testament. Yes. God and Jesus must be one in the same. Amen. Amen. I thank God again that I'm Jesus only. And again, I'll be Jesus only tomorrow should God tell him. I'll be Jesus only to the trump of God sounds the end of all things. I made up my mind a long time ago. I'm not going back in that world. I'm going to stay in the Jesus only church. That is the church of the apostles. Amen. I'm going to stay there. To God caused me home. Again, thank God for the sacrifice of the few, that they may be a blessing to many. We thank God for the spirit of giving that he's given true life. Amen. I said before, there's no rich people here. But people save up their money for the third Sunday offering. And save up their money for their tithes and offering. You know, God wrote in the book of Malachi, Bring all your tithes into the storehouse Amen. and prove me herewith. If I not will open up the windows of heaven yeah, right. and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough for you to receive. Yes. Now we know the blessings are coming because right. we're in church this morning. Oh, yeah. Not in the hospital room. Right. Not in the jail cell. Yeah. Not sleeping underneath the park bench. Right. But in the church of God. And we thank God for that. And we don't take it lightly. As a sister testified tonight, we don't take our shallow homes lightly. Somebody made a sacrifice for us to give, amen, the, and allow us for the privilege of having a place to go and a place to stay. Amen. Especially so when the weather gets kind of difficult to deal with. Amen. But it's all to the glory of God. Yes. We thank God for that. Now, I have a very important message I want to bring to you uh, today. But I'd like to hear from the bells saying uh, there are some places. There are some things I may not know. There are some places that I cannot go, but I am sure of this one thing, oh yes, I know God is real, for I can feel him deep within, yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for He has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like you.
I can see him. Right. I can't necessarily touch him, mm -hmm. but I can feel him down in my soul. Right. Hallelujah. Right. And it gives you a joy. Amen. This Bible says unspeakable. Amen. In other words, you can't divine or de figure out the peace and comfort you have in the promise. Amen. We live by the promise of God that there is a better place a better life Amen. after this life is over. Yes. Somewhere in glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And everybody here got a mansion somewhere. Yes. Yes. The Bible says no more sickness, no more pain, no more suffering, yes. and no more death. Yes. The former things are passed away. Yes. You don't have to worry about no bills or uh, what's going to happen if your check don't come and right, praise right. the Lord. Who's, who loves you and who don't? Right. Who's talking about me and who ain't? Right. Not to worry about all those things. Right. All those things have passed away. Yes. And I, I thank God again this morning that he set this church apart right. for a special need. Yes. And we today are faced with the wickedness of false religion that yes. has crept into Christianity. We don't have to worry about Islam. We don't have to worry about no Muslims. We got to worry about the Christian church yes. and the wickedness that has come by those who would deceive and hurt the church of God. Yes. Telling all kind of lies on Jesus. That's right. yes. The homosexual community say, well, Jesus made me this way. Ooh, wow. Are you a liar? That's right, yes. Jesus didn't make you that way. You became that way. Jesus ever, never made nobody with a smoking habit. Amen. That's right. That's your fault. Amen. Then you ain't the devil's fault. That's your fault. Amen. Preach. God ain't never made nobody alcoholic. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. We became victims of our own wicked imagination yes. and through the influence of people who do not follow God. Yes. Habits fell upon us. And habits sometimes are hard to go by. But through the power of the Holy Ghost. And that's why Jesus told his disciples after he had preached to them, he said, now wait, go to the upper room and wait there until you be endued with power from on high. Now this power from on high, that's not no physical power. That's a mental power, power that you have through the Spirit of God that dwells within you. I do all things through Christ that dwells within me. That's right. Not of myself. I can't stop smoking without God. That's right. I can't stop drinking liquor without God. Preach. I can't stop all these bad habits I have without God. That's right. But through God, I can do everything and anything but fail. That's right. Now, uh, I want you to go to the book of Acts, second chapter. And I want to... Uh, uh, point out the error of false religion yeah. and now that the so called Christmas season is upon us, Glory. you're going to see them more and more on, on television uh -huh. yeah. now I saw four or five of them yesterday yeah. instead of having the commercial they have them liars speak uh -huh. yes. God loves you and all you got to do is repeat these words Glory. and I try to call them but I can't never get through all right. brothers and sisters it takes more than repeating the word to get you to heaven yeah. you got to change your lifestyle Yes, and the only way you can change your lifestyle, as the Bible used the term holiness, you got to create within you a holy atmosphere within yourself. Yes. Yes. Now, holiness simply means I'm going to deny everything that uh, of the flesh, and I'm going to follow after God according to the doctrine of God. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So again, we have to understand the importance of following the doctrine that saves us. Now, in Acts, the second chapter, I want to say to those hypocrite preachers, you come on TV all the time, and you say all you got to do is repeat these words and call this number. You know what the number going to say. Uh -huh. uh, well, uh, you, you, you say, but uh, would you send a donation yeah, to the church? 
They, they get to beg in early. Uh, early. <laughs> so you don't forget right. later. All right. You get to beg in first. Hey, in Acts, the second chapter, I want you to jump right in verse, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both that Lord. That same Jesus whom you crucified has been made what? Both Lord and Christ. God and Messiah. That same Jesus whom you crucified is God and Messiah. Right. Read. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now they said to Peter, after Peter preached that dynamic sermon, yeah. they introduced, now hear me, everybody on uh, uh, YouTube land, this introduced the New Testament covenant church. All right. Covenant means contract or yeah. agreement. The New Testament church is different than the Old Testament church. Yes. Now, in the book of Acts, we're going to get to Hebrews, Acts, uh, Hebrews the 8th chapter. Matter of fact, let's go to it right now. Hebrews the 8th chapter. And jump right in at... Try verse 8. For finding fault with them... He said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Back into verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Now, if the Old Testament was that m most important, why would there be need for a new covenant? Read. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Now, apply today, Israel represents the church today. Yes. All right? I'm going to make a new covenant with the church today. Read. And with the house of Judah, not uh, according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Not according to the covenant I made with your fathers. Is that what he said? Yes. Yeah. Who, who was the father? Abraham. Yes. Right, right. Right. Now, he gave the seed of Abraham the area in Palestine forever. Yes. But wait a minute. Read that verse you just read. Verse Is that verse 7? Uh, 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. Not according to the covenant I made with your fathers, Abraham. Uh-huh. In the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land when of I Egypt. When I took them from the land of Egypt. Because they continued not in my covenant. They didn't stay in my covenant. Read. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. I don't regard them anymore. Read. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. This is a new covenant I'm going to make with the house of Israel or the church today. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. Oh, wait. I'm not going to put the law on the tablet. I'm going to put that law in their heart. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So the covenant now is in your heart. What? Amen. To obey God. That's right. Yes. To do the instructions God has given you now through the New Testament covenant, Amen. which is by the doctrine of the apostles whom God had chosen. The apostles wrote the Bible, the New Testament Bible. Amen. Prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Yes. So it was apostles with the Holy Ghost indwelling yes. that gave them the authority to make the New Testament covenant. Now, I want you to get, uh, get, where's that, Second John, uh, jump right in from verse 1, read 10 and 11. Now, show the importance of the New Testament covenant. We are not to affiliate or assimilate with any group of people that does not bring you the doctrine of the apostles, right. because that is a new covenant church. Yes. Now, again, re read that passage. If there come any unto you, if they come any unto you and bring not this doctrine and don't bring the doctrine of the apostles uh huh receive him not into your house receive them not where into your house neither bid them God speed you don't invite them in nor do you say have a blessed day have a nice day Amen. what do you do you leave them alone Amen. the influence of the false church had deceived so many until when you look at the true church we are a, 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 a drop of a, a drop in an ocean of unbelief. All right. yeah. If you would go to the Baptist church this morning, you would see cars upon cars upon cars. Right. Yeah. All them hypocrite churches. Whoa. Even the Catholic church is packed out this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you know they, they're a great big life. So, we today have kept the ordinance of God and are trying to follow the instructions of God. I mean, and, and, and go back to Acts the second chapter. 
and pick up in verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Wait. He said unto them, Now after he had preached the first sermon that introduced the New Testament church, watch close, he said, Repent, each and every one of you, yes. and be baptized, what? In the name of Jesus Christ. He didn't say get baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yes. He said in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Why? Because the testator to the New Testament covenant is Jesus. It was Jesus who died at Calvary to solidify the New Testament church. So in order for you to be assimilated or engrafted into the New Testament church, you got to be water baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The baptism of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, now I hope you two pay close attention. It was first introduced after the Nicene Council in 325 by Constantine and his followers, yes. his preachers, constantly preaching, not God's preachers. Amen. And the other ones were told you get baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Because that's what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19. Jesus never said that. Hallelujah. Jesus said, go ye therefore and preach and teach all nations. Be baptized in the name of the Father, name of the Son, and name of the Holy Ghost. And the baptism in the name of Jesus recognizes Jesus as the Father in creation, yes. Son in redemption, yes. Holy Ghost in the church. Yes. If any man has not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. That's the Holy Ghost in the church of God. So today we have to understand there's been a, a great big lie put on the New Testament church. And multitudes are following them, but just a few who want to follow the right way. In Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Watch close. 7 and 6. Here God gives an instruction through the prophet concerning a group of people. Now this is a small group of people. But that does not mean they are a disobedient people. Right. Read. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. You are holy people unto God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. He chose himself. you to be a special people. Read that again. He chose the, you. Hath, God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Unto himself. Not to nobody else. You are answerable to God. Nobody. You're not answering to no other creature but God of the glory. He's the one that registers unto you the right way and the wrong way, and you've got to follow that registration. Yeah. You cannot allow yourself to be enticed or in, 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 in influenced by people who don't believe what you believe. Yeah. We don't celebrate no Christmas. Yeah. But the majority of the Christianity celebrate Christmas. Yes, yeah, so why do you celebrate Christmas? And one woman told me, well, that's for the birth of Christ. And you know I got beside myself. I said, can you find that in the Bible? She said, well, I don't know exactly where it is. But I can call my pastor. I said, well, I wish I had time. You can sure call him. If you find Christmas in the Bible, I want you to show it to me. And I'll eat up every page in this book without no water to chase it down. So I'm saying, but if they are misguided and misleaded, go to Walmart now. Yep. They've got decorations everywhere, everywhere you can look. Yes. Do they believe in, in Christmas? Nope. Most of them don't. Nope. I believe those, those people who follow, uh, for you, want you to follow Christmas, I believe they're Jews. Yes. And they celebrate Hanukkah. Hanukkah. They don't celebrate Christmas. Right. But they'll say Merry Christmas to you when you come in with that pocket full of money. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The devil's club. Put this in the airway. You don't have to pay for it till next year. Glory. Ain't this November? <laughs> next year is how long? Two months away? Yeah. But the people go for it. Oh, I don't have to pay till next year. Next year, right around the corner. Uh, Foolish yeah. person. Amen. So we see, man, how they have influence in a mighty and a wrong way. But we're dealing, uh, I want to go into that covenant. Go back to uh, Hebrews 8 chapter. And read me from verse, read verse 9, 10, and 11. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant. They didn't stand my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Read. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Uh -huh. I will put my laws into their mind. Uh -huh. I'm going to put the laws in their mind and in their heart. Read. And write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Now here God is trying to explain 
everybody, whether you got a whole lot of money or don't have any, you got to follow God according to the New Testament church. Amen. We today have been engrafted into all this mental psychology that, uh, well, God just wants you to love everybody. First of all, God died for everybody, but it's not necessarily that he loves everybody. When you say you are special people under God, yes, yes. Special read the rest of it. Verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Now I want you to again go back to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I'm trying to bring this in together where you can understand. If you obey God and the laws he put in your heart, this makes you a special people unto himself. Read. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are upon the face of the now earth. Now wait. He chose you to be above all the people of the earth. Yeah. What? Because you're special. Yes. Special means you're different or set apart. That's right. Yes. The word sanctified means set apart. Yes. We're a sanctified church. We're set apart from the rest of churches. Amen. And when God comes back, he's not coming back for churches. He's coming back for one church. Amen. Read that again. I'm in Deuteronomy. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. A holy people? Wait, wait a minute. Holy. Ooh, come on. Holy people. Yes. Right, well, what is holiness? Come on. Holiness means a lifestyle that qualifies a certain characteristic within the individual yes. because the Lord now is in, in, inside of me, in my heart. Yes. Right. So therefore, by being in my heart, I have to obey certain instructions of God. Right. Yes. And the basic instructions of God, you can't commit fornication. Right. You can't get drunk. Amen. It means you can't drink. All right. Because in order to get drunk, you got to drink. That's right. Whether you're in the basement of, hey man, I'm just sitting in front of the TV <laughs> with a six pack, you're still going to get drunk. <laughs> Drunkenness means anything that you take that will change your mental capacity yes. to operate in a normal context. All right. yes. In other words, you get high. Yes. You get relaxed. Uh -huh. And sometimes when you get high and too relaxed, you don't do things that you wouldn't do if you was sober. Right. Yes. I did it well because I was high and relaxed. Uh -huh. I robbed the bank, but that didn't mean to rob the bank. I wouldn't rob the bank if I'd not been drunk. All right. yes. Drunkenness is an offense to God. And a drunkard, a drunkard cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. No. Yes. Now, I want to go back to Noah. Y'all recall the, the title, uh, the text of Noah, where it says he cursed Canaan, yes. his son, Ham, yeah. to be a servant of servants. And these people took that and run away with it. Sure well, it's in the Bible. Ham's descendants should be servants of his brother. But who cursed Ham? A drunkard. Noah did. Go back to that text. I think it's found in, the, don't go to it now, but somewhere around the ninth chapter of the book of Genesis. God never cursed Ham. God never cursed Cain. Noah did. But Noah couldn't curse nobody because he was drunk. He was drunk in his tent. And the Bible said they, his sons came in and saw his nakedness. And one of the brothers covered him up. But the Bible says, they knew what his brother had done to him. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, if you search the scripture closely, when Cain killed his brother, he went to the land of Nod, and there he knew his wife. Yes. In other words, he had sex with his wife. Yes. Now, if you follow the text in the book of Genesis, 19 chapter, when the two angels came to the men in Sodom, yes. they said, no, bring them in out. We want you to know them. Why? Because they were infiltrated with homosexuality. Yep. Yeah. They wanted to know them. And we, to prove the point, they would speak about a homosexual act. Yep. Uh, Lot told the two, told the sodomites, yep. said, well, wait a minute, I got two daughters, two daughters. and they virgins. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. No man has known them. Yep. Right. In other words, known them. In other words, they had never had sex before. Right. Let me bring you up my two daughters. He said, no. Uh -huh. We want them young men. <laughs> Now, did Noah commit the first act of homosexuality with one of his sons? He said he knew what they had done. Was it just seeing his nakedness? It could have been a whole lot deeper than that. But I'm just trying to show you. If you use line for line, precept on precept, something happened. All 
Right, brother. It was, I think it was a little bit more than Noah seeing it, the son seeing his nakedness. All right. All right. So, to understand that us being a separated people and a small group of people for yeah. God's own glory, I said a special people to the Lord, and I'll finish the next part of that text. Yes. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now he said above all people on the face of the earth. I brought this up many times. Yeah. If you're above someone, that don't mean you're even with them. Right, that don't mean you're equal to them. That don't mean you're beneath them. That means you're above. Right, yeah. can, can anyone understand above? Oh, all right. I'm here, but I'm going to heaven. Where's heaven? Above. Right. Not down here, but above. So you're a special people above all the people. And that's Bible. That's not me. That's Bible. You, you can get mad at me all you want, but you, you, you can't box with God. Read finish that text. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. Uh -huh. For ye were the fewest of all people. Oh, wow. Now you're getting in some heavy great water here. Right. You were the fewest. Glory. Or the smallest church. Yeah. Right. Fewest means smallest, don't it? That's right. Right. Of all the churches. Yes. yes. Lord. Of all the people on the earth. Right. Thank God Amen. for making us a part yes. of that small church. Yes. Hallelujah. Because it's a small church that sets an example for the rest of the world. Because we are the ones who are following the righteousness of God. Right, Paul said, if I preach to others and I sin, all right. I myself will be a castaway. Yes. Yes. To all them people who believe in one say, you need to read what Paul said. And Paul wrote most of the New Testament Bible. He said, if I sin, I can go to hell too. Yes. Hallelujah. It's all about obedience. To the instructions of God. I'm going back to Acts the second chapter. Pick back up in verse 40. Watch close. And with many other words did he testify and exhort saying. Now this is after Peter preached that sermon on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. This introduced the New Testament church by a legal mandate now. Yeah. Not just simply by words, but a legal mandate is recorded in the Bible. Read that again. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Read verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Now wait. They continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship. Read. And in breaking the bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. Oh, now that's where I want to stop. Amen. All right. Once they got baptized according to Peter's instructions, they remained steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Yes. And fear came upon all the church. Yes. Yeah. Anytime you get saved, you still got to have a fear of God. Yes. You got to have a fear of, of hell. Yes. Fear came upon well, not you hear the hypocrite preach today, oh, you get so joyful and happy. What about the fear? Amen. What is the fear? In case I backslide. All right. yes. In case I disobey. Amen. Fear came upon them. Why? Because they were all in one accord. And everybody who got saved on that particular day, under Peter's preaching, fear came upon them. In other words, I can't go back to smoking. All right, Pop. Amen. I can't go back to drinking no more. Uh -huh. I can't go back to gambling no more. That's, uh, no, why? Why? I might go to hell. Yes. Hallelujah. Holiness comes to give you an understanding of the righteousness of God through the Spirit inside. Yes. The Spirit compels you. It don't make you, but it'll, it'll compel you to live right. Yes. Yes. It can't make you live right, but it'll, it'll give you the uh, inclination of, and the desire to live right. Yes. Yes. I can't go back to smoking no more. Amen. Oh, I might want to go back to that pipe, uh, and that liquor bottle. My goodness. I used to love to get high. No, you can't do that no more. Amen. I can't go back to gambling no more. Amen. Oh my goodness, that's a lovely guy. No, I can't do that no more. Right. Well, I'm saved now. Yes. Amen. I, go back to, I can't go back to fornicating and uh, sweethearting and all, all right. that. Amen. All right. I shared about that sister calling me up on the phone <laughs> my, at my radio cast. Right. She said, pray for my boyfriend. <laughs> He's not saved, but I am. Right. I said, your boyfriend? And you saved? Oh yeah, I'm saved, but he not saved. I said, you live with him? She said, oh yeah, we live together. I said, but you know that's a sin? 
Oh, no, no, no. See, I talked to my pastor. And my pastor said it's all right because we intend on getting married. Glory. The Bible didn't say intend on getting married. Right. Yes. The Bible said if you see with someone who's not, you're not married to, that's a sin. Glory. Matter of fact, I think the first words in First Corinthians what is it, 6 and 9, it said, first word, it's fornication. fornication right. That's right. The Lord. first spiritual breakdown concerning the moral code is fornication. Yes. Now I said, did your pastor ever read that? <laughs> all right. You know what you did then, don't you? Click. <laughs> you can handle that, you hung up the phone. Because I was going to tell you, have your pastor to call me. Right, and I call him a liar to his face. Right, Amen. Yeah. One way to go. And that's by following the Bible, denying yourself and pick up your cross and follow after Christ. If you're not willing to pick up your cross and deny yourself, you're not willing to go to the kingdom of heaven. And I made it my mind a long time ago. I'm going to give up everything that's not right in the Bible. And I'm going to use the Bible for my Bible. Not what somebody has to tell me. But if the preacher tells me, I'm going to back it up by the scripture. If he tells me something ain't scripture, bye. I'm going somewhere else. And so God sends me a message. Where to go to to hear the word of God. By the truth of God that's preached by a preacher who's telling you the truth. Every preacher's not telling you the truth. But we got to hold on to the truth now. Everything is falling apart now. Preaching, marrying men to each other. Marrying two lesbians to each other. What else is wrong with you? Where in the Bible can you find that? Yeah. Where can you find repeat after me and you saved? Right. Peter preached a sermon. Yes. And you follow the teachings of the sermon that Peter preached yes. in order to be saved. For the promises to you and to them that are far off, that's to the Gentile family. Right. Now I have a right to be saved. Yes. Yeah. But brothers and sisters, once you are saved, you got to follow the instructions of the Bible. Yes. Yes. You cannot deflect or you can't say, I, 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 I want to maybe correct the apostle. And yes. the apostle don't understand that I love beer. And, and uh, I, don't, I, I don't necessarily get drunk. Anytime you take an intoxicant that changes your mental perception yes. and your yes. mental uh, aquarium that God has given you, you're drunk. That's right. yes. If you don't never stagger, you're still drunk. Yes. And that's why you drink it. That's right, yes. To get drunk. Yes. yes. Oh, I don't call it drunk. I just get high. It's the same thing. Amen. Right. High, get a buzz, or whatever you want to call it. Yes. When you change the natural concept of your mental thought process yes. and your mental being, you're drunk. Amen. And the Bible said a drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Didn't say stagger. Yes. That's right. Didn't say uh, knock over tables and amen and <laughs> weave all down the highway. It just says drunk. <laughs> And the way, the reason why you do it, get drunk. Because you drink liquor. That's right. And liquor don't taste like Kool-Aid. Don't tell me liquor tastes like iced tea. Amen. There's no pleasant taste in liquor. No. Uh, beer. That's right, Ain't no pleasant taste in it. No. Well, you acquire it. Yes. You keep drinking because you like the feeling. The, fi the feeling is artificial. Yes. That's right, bro. God does not deal with anything that's artificial. Amen. God does not deal with anything that's counterfeit. Amen. You gotta be for real. Amen. That's why God don't allow women to paint their face. That's a, that's a mask. That's a false face. Amen. You trying to make that do something other than what you are. Yes. You creating a beauty that's man-made. Yes. Right. Wash off at night. Mm -hmm. And then you put it on the daytime. I got to face my public. Uh, Glory. Oh. Amen. Amen. Right. Your public can't take you to heaven. That's right. But the word of God can. Yeah. And God didn't tell you to wash your face and then, and then take a bath and then put on your makeup and your jewelry. Right. The Bible says this is attributed to a prostitute. That's right. Yeah. So I say to you two, glad again, take me off if you want to. But if God get ready, he won't put me back on. But if you paint your face, you need a clown or a prostitute. Now, you can flip the coin all you want. Amen. It's going to come up here. Right. Huh? Have you been right, preacher? Amen. It's going to come out here to tell. Either you're right or you're wrong. And the Bible says you're wrong, you're wrong. Yeah. And the Bible says you're right, you're right. Yeah. Give me uh, that passage in, in uh, Proverbs. Hello. 7 yeah. to 10. Yes. Yeah. Young man, Proverbs 7 and 10. Young man, foolish and void of understanding. Which was Israel in a backslidden condition. Yes. He went in the deep hours of the night, the Bible says. Yes. He was looking for something. Uh -huh. 
Uh -huh. Read. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtle of heart. The man met a woman in the attire of a harlot. She was dressed like a harlot. Right. Harlot yes. means prostitute. Yes. Or whore, whichever yeah. term you want to use. Read. She is loud and stubborn. Her oh, wait a minute. He met a woman what? She is loud and stubborn. Mm -hmm. uh, the previous verse. Oh. And uh, with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Now, that's where I want to go. Attire means dressed. Yes. Like a prostitute. Yes. If the woman was dressed like a prostitute, again, the 99,000 question, yep. how do women dress who are not prostitutes? That's right. Amen. If a man have a car and another man don't have a car, you can't say, I got a car if I don't have one. All right. Amen. The man across the street, he got a car. I don't have one. Amen. So if a woman dressed like a prostitute, here's a woman, don't dress like a prostitute. That's right. Amen. One is filthy, yes. corrupted, mm -hmm. and the other is clean. That's right. Hallelujah. And professing yeah. something. That's right. 1 Timothy 2 and 9, and connect with verse 10. Amen. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Women dress in modest apparel. With shamefaced and sobriety. Shamefaced means free from makeup. That's right. Amen. Uh -huh. Not with pretty hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array. Not with pretty hair, gold, or pearls, which means jewelry. Yes. Right. Well, it didn't say diamonds, but it means diamonds. That's right. Amen. It didn't say rubies, but it means rubies. Yes. Amen. It didn't say sapphires, but it means sapphire. Yes. Well, how are we going to prove this? Read. Read. But which becometh women professing godliness. No, finish verse 9. Let apart. Okay. Not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Oh, costly right. array. Yes. Uh -huh. Now you see what it's dealing with. Yep. It also includes your mink coat. Yep. That's right. And your fox fur. Amen. That's right. All them expensive clothing that you can buy at Walmart. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You can buy a rabbit and look like me. You say, well, I got me a full-leg mink. No, that's rabbit. Yes, sir. Amen. And then we pay $75 at the garbage seal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse 9. Verse 10, rather. But which become women professing godliness with good women works. Women with professing godliness. Godliness means holy lifestyle. Holiness. Amen. Not with jewelry. But women who profess godliness. Right. Holy women don't wear jewelry right. and makeup and all that mess. Why? Because you're separated. You're not doing this for the glory of humanity. Right. Women put on the makeup because he wants to look nice to somebody else, a man. Yes. Right. Nowadays it's man or woman. Because uh, right. you can't tell the difference nowadays, can you? Uh, nope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Right. <laughs> Sometimes when you're in the world and you go into a bar, you think, now you better look twice. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh, right. oh, no, it may not be. Uh -huh. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. I remember once we were in the service station in Paris. And it wasn't safe. Me and my buddies went in the bar. And I said, my buddy said, I'm look kind of strange, don't they? I said, I, I, I believe they do. Uh -huh. He said, you know what? These are men. I said, let's go. He got out of here. Yeah. Make up in the post everything, take God. No, you're trying to make believe that you're something else to deceive somebody who may not know. That's right. Thank God we look twice. Hallelujah. See, now if you were drunk, and me and my buddy, we never, never drank alcohol. Amen. Amen. Uh, you smoke cigars, we never, never drank alcohol. And now, have we had a, a, a drink or two? All right, brother. Oh. I just say and go get in the bar, but at closing time, all women look like Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> at closing time. That was you had enough drink. Before you were early. No, 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 no. She ain't what I want. But get, get enough drink and it's closing time. Oh my goodness, she looks so pretty. Amen. Amen. So I'm saying, once you stay in the Holy Ghost and that his spirit rule you, you don't have to worry about making the foolish mistakes of Satan. Amen. Let's stay in the holiness church. Amen. Let's understand the principles of Godliness. Now again, I want to close with that New Testament covenant. Yes. God said I made a new covenant yes. that's different than the covenant I made with Abraham. Yes. So anytime you take a people 
that were born and birthed in another country, such as Europe, yes. and then go to North Africa and claim some kind of inheritance, all you got to do is check their background. All right. Amen. Amen. You got to check their ethnic background, find yeah. out where they came from. Uh, but like, wait a minute, if your forefathers didn't come from North Africa, how are you going to take this land and say it's, it's mine? Amen. Well, because I followed the Torah. Yeah, but the Torah didn't away with it. Right. Right. There's a new right. order now. That's right. Right. Jesus said, I introduce you a new covenant. New Different than no fathers. Right. Now, if you ain't a Christian, you ain't got no business there. All right. Amen. Amen. Preach, brother. And a Christian means following Jesus. Now, yes. if you follow Jesus, you've got a right to be there and everybody else who follow after Christ. Right. Because that land is yours. But it's not necessarily in Palestine. Right. Why? Because the law now is in your heart. That's right, brother. You could be in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Right. But Jesus belongs to you. You don't have to go to North Africa. Stay in Spartanburg. Lord. But stay in the church of God. Hallelujah. That you might know the things that are given and gifted by God. Amen. Thank God for the word tonight. Amen. Lord, don't let me fail. I want to be your bride. Amen. Thank God for the new covenant, amen. If it yeah. wasn't for the new covenant, we would not be here. Thank amen. God for our prophet, amen. Right. Well, for our prophet teaching us about the new covenant. We will be lost. We will be hooked up in Constantine the Great, amen. He's not so great. He's he's late, amen, and he's not the great. But thank God Jesus being the great, amen. Thank God for the word, prophet. He's, he's, he's continued to teach us, and, you know, just we got to hold fast to the word of God. We continue to stay steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. That's what we're doing. It's the doctrine to save us. Like prophet told me years ago, it's not about the stories. It's the doctrine, amen. I thank God. And I held on to that. I thank God for the New Testament church, amen. Prophet always teaches we are a chosen people, amen. We have to continue to follow. God, and it has to be in our heart and stay in our mind, amen. Right. You know, once it's in our heart, our mind is going to follow and do the obedience. And I'm going to close with Romans 12 and 1. I beseech yes. you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, accepted unto God, which is a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, yes. that you may what is prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. And that's the New Covenant Church, amen. Right. And and we know, amen. A lot of people don't know, but we know the New Testament Church yep. the covenant is right here in Spartanburg. Amen. I don't yeah. know about anywhere else. It's right here at Key Life in the Falls Church. Amen. Thank God for the word, y'all. Stand and be listening. Amen. 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 May the Lord watch. May the Lord watch. Between me and thee. Between me and thee. While we're absent. While we're absent. One from another. One from another. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.